So you can see that the carburetor is just, the lever is just uh, sitting, rubbing the top of the groove. So that's got to go on the carburetor. Dirty dog, yeah. Well, that's for another day. That won't be too hard now that I know what I'm doing. These four bolts only. And uh, we'll slip the Bakelite carburetor insulator isolator into the hole. All right, you guys. This thing runs, but not very well. This is what fell down into the mechanical part of the of the snowblower thrower, and uh, I've just taken the four screws off of here. I'm changing to a Torx, so I don't have to kill myself, or no, don't have to uh, scratch myself up as much as I did getting it the first time. I'm going to take the little air cleaner off the off the carburetor so I can have a better angle to the carburetor removal screws. So Torx can be used on an Allen, on an Allen connection. They just have twice the many, twice as many uh, ridges as you need. Right? So snow blowers don't have an air cleaner. I just don't want to drop anything down in there. So now I will show you. Right there is the choke. And I'm trying to get at that bolt and that bolt so I can put on that intake manifold Bakelite piece. So maybe, just maybe, oh, we have to undo the fuel. No, we don't have to undo the fuel line. We're just going to slip that piece in there. Maybe. certainly saved a lot of fooling around, didn't it? Helps to sleep on stuff. Good. Now I just have to find out which way is which. They're both, this, it's the same this way as it is this way, as it is this way, but this side has some funky lines. So that's where the flash of light comes in. I think, I think it has I do hammer coming down there, so I have to be. I don't want to lose the screws, eh? I think it goes on like that. There we go. to get it in there. And, oh, it went down again. But now I have the technology to get it. Because I know where it is. Hey, stop, stop. Oh, she's way down there. Maybe I can just, oh. Oh, there's another gasket, too. Ooh. Oh, maybe that's... I see what happened. I know you guys didn't. The Bakelite stayed there, and the... Uh, and the... Gasket fell. Lordy. on like that. That goes on like that. I, I said to myself I, I should be sitting down for this. Give my feet a rest. There we go. Now I wonder if I can jam something in there. You know what? Let's just take a 5 sixteenths one, one five sixteenths out and pull it back a little more. Just a long tool from yesterday, I didn't notice that. Okay. 
Okay, now maybe I can just do something like... So I need something medium length. That's too long. Maybe this will do it. Okay. There, now at least I can I can work away here. This and this. Possibly this and the Allen key from yesterday. Uh, once I get it on the screws. There's the gasket and one and the other. Okay, let's make sure the throttle is still connected. What was that? That was my little magnetic rest, I think. I gotta make sure though, because I don't want to lose anything in here again. Yeah, it was that. I just don't know where it is. <laughs> It's got a magnetic end, eh? I'm there. So I think I might just screw that carburetor down first and then hunt for that magnet later. it off so I can have access to the other one. Good. Okay, so it's on there but not real tight. Show you that. There's our carburetor. It's on fairly tight, and then there's our choke open and full. So now I'm just going to find that whatever's in there, that magnetic lever I was using. Be right back. It was on the floor. Thank goodness. Okay, so first we're going to stick this up ding, in the other corner. Weighing nothing. Oh, see, that's, we got to put the the air chute on. One. Are you guys getting a look at that? You're kind of getting a look at it. I'm not going to get you in here. It's, it's hard enough with two hands and a t set of tools. Okay, now we're going to tighten that up with said Allen key and pliers. Or maybe just an Allen key. And there's nothing easy about this, you guys. <sighs> Rats. Huh. Good. 
Okay. I'm not going to put the screws, the rest of the screws into this guy until we find out if it runs. Sounds like about a 50cc two-stroke dirt bike from the old days. What do we got hanging there? Nothing. And you know what? You know what we should probably do is uh, just check the spark plug while we're <laughs> while we're forking around. It's funny when you when you sleep on something. It just goes better. Now I thought through this process. Now this is probably a CJ8 in here. Three quarters of an inch. And uh, for years I've been using this three quarter inch impact to do spark plugs. I don't know why. I just do. Oh, it's practically, what is it? A Bosch. Nothing wrong with a Bosch. I'm just going to clean it up on my wire wheel and I'll be right back. There. You know there's only maximum 30 hours on this machine, right? It's just old. marks on the cat on the carburetor flange because it didn't have that big light adapter in there. So I'm not going to put the door on, I'm not going to put any more screws on until this thing starts. We need electric electricity. I tell you the guy that years ago the guy that came up with this uh, AC starter whoever did it first I don't know who it was Probably post World War II. Oh boy. Come on. Come on, baby. Light my snow thrower. <laughs> How did I do that in such a short period of time? I'm not yanking on anything today. Till later. And then I'll do a. I think I've got a, a champion generator coming in. Okay. Oh, we have to plug the spark plug wire in, Mick. Prime it a little bit. See if we get some leakage. There we go. We're turned on. There is no throttle. That's why I never put all the screws back into it because the throttle's not activating on the on the governor. Yeah, it's jammed tight. There you go. That's all right. That's why we didn't put the covers on. It's got to be something just. Oh yes. I wonder if it's just stuck because I have the. Oh, 
think the throttle on the okay we gotta loosen that carburetor off again it's just catching it likes to smoke okay so yes the uh, carburetor throttle is wide open so I'm gonna I'll be right back okay we got her I'll just show you what I was fighting there there's there's the uh, governor arm there's the throttle bracket to the throttle of the carburetor and then I was trying to thread that spring into the same hole that the Z bend goes on on that throttle arm right there so it should have some flexibility now and before it didn't I think it's going to be all right and what helped was I just I just pulled this axle out of the way right there so I could get the plastic past the axle yeah just like that drop it inside the machine and we're good whoa let's get this back on uh, wide and I just have to find that little rubber a bushing and we're going to go together I won't bore you with that. I just I've, I've dropped a lot of stuff right in that exact spot. All right, one more small thing. I'm not going to put the bottom screws in until it's running, but I just have to make sure that the well, we can set it this way that the tube from the primer button is on the carburetor, and it is. Okay. Should drip to a point when you when the carburetor is full. Eh? Come on, lady. Just waiting for a drip. How much fuel don't we have? I want to put about half a liter in. Mm, it's got some. I should drink. too much fuel. <laughs> Man, this has been a challenge, you guys. Oh, tools are coming out of it. What is going on? Did I tighten up the carburetor enough? RPM. Let's just turn it on and if I manually govern it I can get it to about the right speed. Oh. All right. Nothing's easy guys. Okay.
Well, it runs. <laughs> but I'm just starting to wonder if I've got the uh, throttle in the wrong hole on the carburetor, right? But I thought it only had one hole. What is up? Now I've got to take these four screws out and have another look. I knew I shouldn't have put those screws in. Eh? Was actually running better than this before I started working on it. We're close. It's just a pain in the neck, right? This is a really long alley that I live on, and people use it like a highway. Okay. So I'll let you know when I learn a little bit more. It runs good, it's just running real fast. Alright my friends, right there is the uh, governor adjustment. There. And this bolt was relatively loose. And you can see, now on a governor adjustment it only goes a quarter of a turn, not even. So if you can look at this. Look at that. It's now facing at noon. And then when I change it. I'm going to pull it counterclockwise. And that's all there is to a governor adjustment. That small amount. You see where before it was up and down. And now it's at about the top here is I'd say what 11 o'clock. So I'm going to see if I can tighten that up. But he's got a square, he's got a 1032 with a square nut on there, which means you can't turn it. So I'm going to have to try and see if I can get that tightened up, holding my lips just right. This is getting deep, you guys. The fiddle fairies have been in here. All right, my friends, this is pretty sketchy, but I'm going to try and start this thing. Uh, the problem is I won't be able to turn it off. Oh, here comes my buddy Alfred. Talk to you in a bit. Okay, it's cute, but it's me. I got it all back together again. These three bolts were the hardest because they weren't standard bolts. So let's turn it on. We don't need a choke. enough for today. Thanks for watching this one with me guys. So the RPM is set at 3800. Uh, I saw stuff all over the map from 3600 to 4500. So I think 3800 is a nice RPM for this old girl. And uh, we are going to move forward. Thank you.